Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome in if you are new. Today we are going to go over how I customize my desktop wallpaper. I've had quite a few requests since after showing my setup asking me about how I customize my desktop background in Windows 10. So let's jump right in. The first thing I will have you do is right click your desktop and create a new folder. This will keep us organized. I'm going to name it desktop photos. Just a little side note here, I've linked all the websites that we visit in the description. I am not affiliated nor sponsored by any of these websites. This is merely a tutorial on how I make my desktop background cuter. Next, you are going to open your main internet browser. In my case, I use Google Chrome. The first website I'm going to have you visit is the Microsoft Store, and you are going to download Translucent TB. Once installed, this will make your taskbar translucent or see-through, which you can see adds such a vibe to the overall background. You can adjust additional settings by clicking on the arrow on your taskbar, but I left mine translucent. Next up, if you are unsure which aesthetic you want to go for, I highly recommend using Pinterest to search up color palettes that speak to you. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going for a beige boho look. As you can see, there is a plethora of different color palettes that could inspire you. You can also search HD wallpapers on Pinterest, but the thing I don't like about Pinterest is that a lot of the artwork and content is stolen, so I'm going to show you a more responsible way to get a cute desktop background. So while Pinterest is great for finding color palettes, you don't know what the resolution actually is, even if you type in 1920 by 1080. We are going to head over to unsplash.com. This site houses a lot of high resolution images that are great for your desktop and also they are free to use. If we look at the license for this website, it explicitly states, all photos can be downloaded and used for free for both commercial and non-commercial purposes and no permission is needed. It does state that credit is appreciated and I really want to emphasize that if you are a good person, you are going to credit. A lot of these photographers would appreciate that and you crediting them can really help them get their name out there if you do end up using their work in say a YouTube video. The only thing you cannot do with these photos is sell them or make your own com like compilation of them to replicate a similar service like Unsplash. So let's move on to finding our wallpaper. I typed in boho because that's the vibe today. You probably should also add in 1920 by 1080 for correct dimensions, but it is not always necessary. I immediately found this beautiful photo by this talented artist, which is credited in the description down below. I'm going to click on it and download it. And once downloaded, I will save it into the folder that we made earlier on the desktop called desktop photos. I will name it boho background and save it. So now that we have our image, I'm going to exit out of Unsplash and we are going to head over to Canva. I do believe that you need an account to use Canva. I could be wrong, but it is easier to create an account so your creations are saved under that account in case you need to edit or reuse them later. Canva is free to use. So once you are signed in, you will go to the search bar at the top and type in desktop wallpaper. I already have it in my recent searches, so I'm just going to click there. You will choose create a blank desktop wallpaper and it will pull up and create for you a blank template. Now I'm not going to go through everything you can do in Canva. If I get enough comments on this video asking me to do so, I will make a full tutorial with the knowledge I have, but we are going to go over the basics for the purposes of this tutorial. We are going to go up to File, Import Files, Choose Files, Choose Our Boho Background, 
Open and Canva will load this image into its images portfolio. All we have to do now is click our image and now it is on our template. From here, we are going to resize this image to fit our template. Okay, that's complete. So next we can head over to elements. I'm going to search rounded square because I really like that look, but feel free to experiment with the other shapes to match your own aesthetic. I will click the rounded square and it has transferred to our template. We can then resize our square to what we like, move it around on the template, and if we hit those three dots in the upper right hand corner, we can adjust the transparency of the square. I'm going to move my transparency down to 71. If you click that colored brown square, it's brown now because that's the color of my box, but if you click that in the top left, you can also adjust the color of the square. I really love using the eyedrop function, which allows you to choose a color directly from your template. So you can experiment with different colors that speak to you from our background that we have. Make sure when you are using this method, that the square is the one that is selected or highlighted. Now, if you do mess up, you can hit the undo button at the top, and I'm going to go a shade lighter with our boxes. So now we are a shade lighter from our original box color, which I think this is a very good shade to go with our background. Now we can duplicate our box so that all other elements match it. We can resize our boxes and move them around like we did previously. You can play with this until you are satisfied with the layout. I'm going to be using inspo from my previous desktop layout because I really like the look and the functionality of it. So now that I'm happy with the layout, we can start to add text. We do this by heading to the left panel and choosing the text icon. You can browse the different texts that they have displayed or search for one that you know that you already like. You can change the color of the text by hitting the A icon at the top of the template. Then you can edit and resize the text to fit within the boxes however you like.
then can add more text to organize our desktop icons. Use whatever phrases you like, but I've chosen creativity, folders, and cozy games to organize mine. I really like this layout so far, but I like to customize my desktop to the extreme. So I'm going to add my name and make some minor adjustments to the text. Now we can head back over to our left panel and type in lines. There are a lot of different types you can choose from, but I thought the dotted one would be super cute. So same thing, click it, change the color, resize to your preference, and then place where you want a divider. And you can also duplicate it so it is the same size and color for the other places that you want to put it. Canva also has images that you can add to your template under elements. I searched for florals and it came up with this cute floral border. I'm going to resize it and then add this to the image next to my name. I thought it would be cute to add it in two different corners, the bottom left corner and then also the top right corner.
With any elements in Canva, you will have to pay attention to the pro items. They kind of have like a little crown next to them. I have the free version of Canva, so I cannot use pro images. You don't really need to have the paid version of Canva to make your, I mean, to use anything and make it cute. So you can play around with these images until you like your layout. I personally really love this teacup image. I used it on my green desktop wallpaper and placed it next to my name. Remember to rotate and flip your images too if they look a little bit weird. And most images you can change the color. It just depends on the type of image. So always check that if you feel like it's not really matching what you're going for. So I am really happy with this layout, so I'm going to go to the top right of the template and click share. Here I can click download and this will download my template to my computer. We can save it to our folder that we created on our desktop. Now that that's saved, we can exit out of Canva and go back to our desktop. We can right click on our desktop and choose personalize. And once this window pops up, we can hit browse, choose our newly created background. And voila, here it is we have our new template background as our desktop background now. You can then move your desktop icons and folders to neatly fit within the template boxes that you created and organize them in a way that makes sense to you. I'm not going to move mine around too much because I'm going to keep my green wallpaper for now, but you get the idea. The 
last thing to talk about is my calendar and the clock that I have on my desktop. For the calendar, all you need is the widget app, which you can get from the Microsoft Store. They have other widgets that you can play around with, but I basically only use the calendar. And you can customize the color of your calendar too. Now, in order to get this clock, you will need to go to rainmeter.net and you'll have to download the rain meter tool. Now, once this is downloaded and installed, you can then go to rain meter skins, which is visualskins.com. You will be able to search through different clocks and I really like the simple and clean clock, but feel free to browse and find the clock that fits your vibe. Once you download the clock that you choose, it will show up on your desktop and from there you will be able to resize and move it around anywhere on your desktop. You can also adjust the color by right clicking on it. And that concludes my tutorial on how to customize your desktop to your aesthetic and to stay organized. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button to help my channel grow. I would truly appreciate all the support that you give me. I hope this tutorial helped you today and I hope that you have a lovely day. Until next time, my friends.